Welcome back. Now, on to health matters, education to protect tomorrow was the theme for this year's Diabetes Day 2022. Now, every November 14, World Diabetes Day is commemorated, which is an opportunity to raise awareness about the impact of diabetes on health of people. Now, it also seeks to highlight the opportunities to strengthen the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of diabetes. And with more on this, I'm now joined by Dr. Matthew Mojekwa, the coordinator for Diabetic Association of Namibia in Oshakati. Good morning, doctor, and welcome to the show. Good morning, doctor, and to your listeners. All right. Now, doctor, diabetes mellitus affects many people in Namibia, and it's also known as one of the primary risk factors in developing heart diseases. Why is this the case? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the heart is considered as what we call the target organ that is affected by diabetes because as you develop diabetes, after a time, there are blood vessels that may be affected in the heart by either blocking them and then the heart going to failure. And as well that diabetes also causes what we call toxic effect on the cells of the heart. So that's how it damages the heart either directly by the, by the sugar acting as a toxin or as a result of uh, the blood vessel to the heart being affected. All right. Now, what makes diabetes life-threatening? When we, well, What makes diabetes life-threatening, you can consider it two ways because it's called a silent killer. Many people are unaware that it is existing. And the person's symptom might just be that of tiredness, weakness, and then the person may just consider it on his being overworked or something like that until suddenly the person can go into one of the comas. You can go into a coma due to your blood sugar being either too low or too high, and you, that may be your end. So, But eventually, many people don't take it seriously because they go along their normal duty with this type of work. And with the background knowledge that there's something locking dangerously in them, which is not incapacitating them, they just keep on going. All right. Now, Doctor, do you think enough is being done with raising awareness on diabetes? We will expect more people to really come in, you know, not only on the Diabetic Association, but different activities. Recently, we tried to raise awareness of cancer and diabetes, but we couldn't succeed because people do not understand the concept of raising awareness. For instance, we intended to use cycling throughout the country, but we couldn't muster enough volunteers who could really join the course of the whole uh, awareness campaign. So we think that not enough is being done, except when Dr. Mojegu comes on air speaks about diabetes. So we are asking young people all over the country to join hands with us, form their branches wherever they are. We are hoping to set up a magazine uh, which will public regularly to speak about diabetes in local languages in all the different regions and tell their stories of their elderly parents or uncles and aunts. So those are some of our aims and objectives. All right. Now, Doctor, according to a recent UN report, Namibia is one of the African countries with the highest percentage of adolescents who drink soft drinks daily. How can we go about dealing with this issue that can lead to diabetes? Yes, it's difficult to control eating habits of people, you see. And that's really, it, it got worse after independence when there's explosion of foreign food and foreign habits, and people abandon their traditional way of eating and drinking. So that becomes a difficult. It's a big challenge for us as an association. But, <coughs> excuse me. We go out trying to conscientize people on those habits, like a bottle of Coke, there's an amount of sugar that is contained in it, and all the fizzy drinks that they should be wary about how they go about taking it. It's a difficult task, but we are trying the best we can. And sometimes you find some people are really coming in and trying to 
conscientize themselves with the information that they are hearing. All right. Now, Doctor, in October, the Diabetic Association of Namibia was working on a nationwide <laughs> awareness campaign. How did that go? Yeah, that's what I was saying. That it didn't go well because we couldn't mobilize enough people to volunteers doing the cycling themselves. Because we intended from every part of the country to use cycle and then with our T-shirt and banners and all that to raise the awareness in the localities. So if we have like people coming from, let's say, Swakopman going through Wavis Bay and then through Arandis, going heading towards Vintu. And then during those break time, we should have the awareness campaign about cancer and then about diabetes and do random blood sugar testings. Right. But we couldn't muster enough people that time to really kick off the campaign. So that's why we couldn't carry it out. All right. Doctor, we wish you all the best with your future projects and we hope people actually do come out next time. And thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right. All right. Yeah. That was Dr. Matthew Mojeku, who is uh, the coordinator of the Diabetic Association of Namibia, talking to us about diabetes. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly with sports.